Hello. Hello. Can, you, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, a very big thank you to those involved with Caton Baptist Church for allowing us to use the building here today. Um, we will hopefully uh, be finished in an hour or so and then uh, please stay if you can. There are some refreshments um, through that way. Um, we're here to baptise uh, Joel and David, bury them and they need it. <laughs> um, and we're going to start by singing and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? They've gained an interest in the Saviour's blood. I hope you have this afternoon. If you haven't, I'll be after you later on. <laughs> Let's stand and rejoice. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Joel, for those who, who I haven't met. Um, and it's been a, been a long journey for me. Um, I grew up in a Christian family and I think I felt a bit too comfortable in that um, when I was growing up. I went to church, believed in everything the Bible said, or at least I thought I did. Um, and I guess I thought I was a Christian for so long and I didn't really know what that meant, I guess. Um, up until I went to a Christian camp called Compass Camps um, and that's when I really started to figure out that I wasn't a Christian. I thought I was and I made myself believe it when I wasn't at all close to the God and I didn't want to know anything to do to do with him really. Um, I was too comfortable in the life in my life and I only ever did what I thought was enough to go to heaven rather than doing it for God, I was doing it for my own selfish intentions. Um, I only wanted to do it to go to heaven, that was it. I didn't want to do it for God's glory or for any other reason, really. And um, it took me a while to realise it, but I came back after Compass Camps and I realised that everything wasn't right in my life and I needed to make a change. And um, I remember praying the, the night afterwards that God had just come back into my life and that I'd be able to put him first in everything. Instead of doing it for myself, I'd do it for him. Um, and it's definitely not been been easy, but I feel like I've I've changed a lot in that. And I, maybe that's why it took so long for me to get baptised. I didn't think, or I didn't see the changes in my life immediately, like a lot of people might have done. Because I didn't see myself as much of a rebel or necessarily a terrible person. Maybe a few people might disagree, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> But for me, I didn't see that change immediately. And when I look back at it now, I, I realise how wrong I was. There was a lot in my life that has changed since becoming a Christian and since making that commitment. Um, just a joy in my life that I never had before. A sense of fulfilment in my life. And there's nothing missing anymore. I always knew that there was something missing and maybe I told myself that that wasn't the case. But I realise now how wrong I was. Um, so that's... Basically, all I've got uh, written down, I thought I'd keep it short and sweet. It's been short, I don't know if it's been sweet, but, <laughs> um, but I do ask for anybody that was in my situation, maybe feeling too comfortable in the life they were living, um, and maybe deep down inside they know they weren't, they're not saved, I do ask that you take it to God and take it to maybe somebody that you know that is a Christian and just ask questions. It's all you can really do, and I'm sure they'll lead you to God. Um, but yeah, thank you, and I think I'll ask Dave to come up now. Uh, I think I would first say that I committed my life to Christ when I was about eight or nine years old uh, at a soccer school. <coughs> Um, and I did it for, for two reasons really. One was that I was scared of going to hell. I'd heard about this uh, yeah, place and uh, I, I enjoyed reading Revelation, weirdly. Um, and yeah, I really just hated the idea of going there. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't understand what my sin meant, that I was a sinner and that I uh, was yeah, far away from God. 
Um, so I think I carried on. I, so I committed my life to Christ. I'll say that's what I thought, but I didn't ask repentance for my sin. I just wanted to be safe from hell. Um, and so, yeah, I carried on kind of in that, uh, same as Joel, in, in a comfortable kind of state of arrogance that I was, uh, had, you know, I was, I was saved and I was, I was doing all right, but I wasn't actually living uh, the way that God wanted me to. Um, and yeah, that carried on through high school, I think. I got worse and worse in um, that I thought I was a Christian and I thought I was forgiven, but I wasn't living at all uh, in the way that God wanted me to. So I was, um, yeah, very comfortable in my sin. And then on a Sunday, I would go to church and I would know the stories and say what people wanted me uh, to. Um, And then I... Uh, went or heard about Rock UK um, so that was the organisation that I work for now, they did like a two year uh, discipleship um, and training programme uh, for you to be an outdoor instructor uh, the first three months involved mainly like discipleship talks and training so uh, I did learn, I learned a lot in terms of um, yeah like dis- discipline and and uh, practical aspects for my faith but the most that I learned I think was from a friend I had called Chris who uh, he just like Jesus just shone through him and I wanted that as well uh, to be in my in my life so I realized the way I've been living with just my my sin was not um, was not okay, and that was separating me from from uh, the father. So, yeah, I uh, repented from my sin and said, um, yeah, I repented from my sin, believed in what Jesus had done on the cross in dying for me to take that that sin away, mm. and um, and nothing nothing happened. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I don't think I fully believed in the work that Jesus had done, or maybe it was. It was more that uh, that Jesus doesn't, or the Holy Spirit when He comes, He works through us. It's not something that instantly changes. Um, so yeah, I was. Uh, I was doubtful. I didn't. I thought I wasn't. From the things that I had done, I wasn't good enough, and that Jesus couldn't actually forgive me. Um, but then I had a few calls with uh, my friend Charlie, Charlie Priest, and he basically showed me that um, God's promises, even though we don't feel maybe like we've been forgiven, that God's promises are uh, they're eternal and they're trustworthy. And that if, um, yeah, for, that whosoever believes in Jesus will be saved. Um, so I repented again of my, of my doubts and um, my unbelief and just said, like, Jesus, please help me, help me believe this. And, um, yeah, that's what he did. And... My, my sins have been forgiven. Uh, and just a verse from 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, uh, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And uh, that's what I want to do today. Say goodbye to, to the old and try to live for Christ. Yeah. Okay, we're going to sing another hymn now. What can wash away my sin? What can wash away your sin? Nothing.
but the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. So let's rejoice. I want to read a verse from John and chapter 16. The helper whom Jesus promised to send. Jesus said, He, when he comes, the Holy Spirit, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. And I want to think a little bit about that this afternoon. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I ask that you will work by the Holy Spirit upon hearts this afternoon and that you would convict of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. In Jesus' name I ask. I'm sure most parents have said at some point in their life they don't understand their children for all kinds of different reasons but I don't actually understand my children I, I can't relate to them for the simple reason and other parents might have the same I was not raised in a Christian home. I don't know what it's like to be raised in a Christian home. I don't know what it's like to grow up with the Bible. I don't know what it's like to go along to church every week to hear the gospel. I didn't know anything of that. I was living like the devil in my 20s. I knew nothing. I didn't read the Bible. I didn't go to church. I didn't know any Christians, nobody shared the gospel with me. And then one day, as a joke, <clears throat> one of my friends thought it would be hilarious to give me a Bible. And it was hilarious because I expect he thought I would never read it. And I thought I would never read it, but I did. I started to read the Bible. And the more I read the Bible, the more I didn't understand it. But I did, strangely enough, come to a conviction that there must be a God. And God started to work in my life. And for the first time, I stopped enjoying my sin. I found it very uncomfortable. I couldn't enjoy fornication. I couldn't enjoy going out and getting drunk every night. I didn't enjoy nightclubs. I didn't enjoy any of it, any more. I started to feel uncomfortable. I had plenty of money, I had success, I had all kinds of things. And my life began to feel more and more empty and I thought I need to do something about this. So the strangest <clears throat> thought that came into my mind that I should go to church. And I went along to a church and the church was having a Bible study and the Bible study they invited me along to was going through Mark's Gospel. And we did that. We went through Mark's Gospel. It took about eight weeks, I think. And we got to the point where Jesus died on the cross. Now, I had no problem realizing that I was a sinner. I knew I was a sinner. I knew my life was filthy. I didn't know the Ten Commandments, but I'd never loved God with all my heart, soul, mind and strength, so I'd broken the first one. I was serving money and everything other than God, so I'd broken the second one. I regularly used to blaspheme and use Jesus Christ as a swear word, so I'd broken the third one. My life <clears throat> was uh, so messed up, I didn't have a relationship with my mother, my father was dead. So I wasn't keeping the fifth commandment. The sixth commandment I thought I might have been clear of, which was that you shall not murder, but 
The problem was my heart was filled with hatred and Jesus said, if you even hate someone from your heart, you're a murderer. My life was so filthy, I was in fornication, adultery, I was a serial pornographer, and you name it, my life was filthy. The Eighth Commandment says you shall not steal, I'd stolen all kinds of things. The Ninth Commandment says you shall not lie, the whole of my life was a lie. And the Tenth Commandment says you shall not cover. Always wanting something else, and that's all I, I ever did. I wanted more. And so I never had a problem thinking that I was a wretched sinner. And when I walked into that church, <clears throat> more and more, I felt a wretched sinner. I think one of the problems for people who were raised in a Christian home, and we've heard it twice this afternoon, is that they can be comfortable. Because there's wretched sinners like Chris Bruff wandering about, getting smashed out of their head all the time and doing all kinds of things, and they look at that and think, well, I, I'm not as bad as that. Well, I don't. I doubt there's many people in this room that were as bad as me. But have you ever been convicted of your sin? Because only the Holy Spirit can convict you of your sin. But we got to the end of the um, eighth week, we looked at the cross, and it hit me very forcefully. I broke God's law. I deserved hell. And Jesus paid my penalty when he died on that cross. And it was like, it, well, <coughs> It makes sense. I don't know how that doesn't make sense to people. Because the first time I heard it, it made sense to me. Not only did it make sense to me, but I knew that was the only way I could ever be right with God. Was if Jesus Christ not only wiped out all my sins, all the things that I'd done, but that he came and changed my heart. So that I could live in a way which pleased God. I knew. I didn't know what it meant. But I'd heard the term born again. And I knew I needed to be born again. And except a man be born again. He'll not enter the kingdom of God. You can be comfortable. You can believe in God. You can believe he died on the cross. You can believe he rose from the dead. You can believe all those things. But until God has done a work in your heart. Until you have a new nature. In Christ, you are dead in your sins. And the third part of what the Holy Spirit does, he convicts of judgment. I knew I was on my way to hell. I knew I was on my way to hell. How could God not send someone like me to hell. I deserved it. Now, I doubt there's anybody in this room today who does not know all that I've just said. I doubt there's anybody here who's not heard that before. But I want to put one missing piece. And I've thought about this. And I think it might be a missing piece for someone here today. Because you've heard it all before. You know you're a sinner. You know Jesus died for your sins. You know the Bible says you must be born again. And you know, though you don't, might, might not want to think about it, that there is a day of judgment. As surely as Jesus rose from the grave, there is a day of judgment. And the Bible says if you will not repent, if you'll not turn, if you'll not stop living for yourself, if you'll not stop trusting your own righteousness and turn and fully put your trust in Jesus Christ, you will face the judgment of God. Here's the missing piece. 
I had no problem thinking that I was a hell-deserving sinner. I was. But I suspect there's lots of people here today. You've been raised in a Christian home. You've grown up with this. You've lived comfortably with it. And you do not see how serious your sin is. A number of times in scripture, Jesus says this. Woe to you. And you know who he says that to. He says it to places like Bethsaida. Capernaum. Woe! Do you know what woe means? It's not slow down. It means accursed. You are accursed. Why were these people accursed? Who was he talking to? He was talking to people who had heard the gospel, who had heard the word of God, who had seen the works of God, who had seen God work in amazing ways all around them. And they would not Repent. And Jesus said, Woe to you. You're accursed. Now, can you be comfortable knowing that you are accursed? If you can, then let me just make it worse. <clears throat> because Jesus goes on to say, on the day of judgment, when you face that great white throne, when the whole of your life is played out and every lie and every impure thought and all the bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart is laid out before a holy God, The people of Sodom and Gomorrah will step forward and say, How could you live under the gospel all your life and see Jesus Christ working in people all around you? And know that God was real and do nothing about it. And that's my question to some of you this afternoon. Because I know that Joe and David aren't the first two people, grown up in Christian families, grown up with the gospel, seeing God working in lives all around them and knowing that he's real, knowing that they're sinners, knowing that Christ died on the cross to bear our sins in his own body and to pay the penalty, knowing that they need to be born again and yet comfortable. Well, I want to make you very uncomfortable because I want to ask you that question. How can you know what you know, believe what you believe and do nothing about it? And I say that in love. How can you? Woe to you. Because if you die in that state, the men of Sodom will stand upon judgment day. The men of Tyre and Sire will stand up and say, how could you do that? If we'd lived with that, if we'd known that, we would have repented of our sins. How could you do that?
And then when all your sin has been played out before the Saviour, then he will ask you, how could you do that? And then when you've been plunged into everlasting darkness and you're weeping and gnashing your teeth, you will ask, how could I do that? May the Holy Spirit convict you of sin today, of righteousness and of judgment. And I beg you by the mercy of God, if you're not born again, if you've never put things right with God, you, you know in your heart that he's not done a work in your life, please, don't walk out that door without Jesus. Because if you do, you walk out a curse. How can you do that? We're going down into the water. Probably the best place for me right now. But let's just pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, at your plan of salvation. And you came down not just to bear our sin, but to face the punishment for it. And we thank you. Lord, I just pray for anyone today in this place who's still comfortable believing everything that they need to believe and yet not knowing you not safe in Jesus Holy Spirit bring conviction Holy Spirit move upon the hearts may the fear of you come upon them may they not leave in that condition Mercy, Lord. Going down into the water, if you're not familiar, we're going to bury them. I'm going to bury these miserable sinners. The old Joe will rest in peace. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. The burial bit was important, and it is for us as well. So if you've not been through the waters of baptism, and you are dead in Christ, and you are born again, then what do you do? Because you need to get baptised. Okay? Somebody wisely got shots on for us. <laughs> so... <coughs> Joe's going uh, there, we're going to lower him back, smash his head on that one now, finish him off. <laughs> In the name of the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joel, we baptise you. In the name of the Father, Jesus the Son. David, 
we baptize you in the name of the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The last hymn is Amazing Grace. <laughs> Amazing Grace. Saved a wretch like me. And if he's not yet saved a wretch like you, please, don't go home without it. That's just closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for everything that you've done in David's life. In Joel's life, we commit them to you, Lord, that they'd walk with you, you do great things in their lives. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for this time together. We yes. thank you for the gospel. Mm -hmm. yes. Lord, go on speaking to us, we pray. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen.